Well, hello everyone. I, uh, my name is Steve Otwell. I'm here speaking in support of the Seafood Hesp Alliance, which is maintaining a uh, training program to, uh, for compliance, assist compliance with the FDA seafood HACCP regulation. Uh, and ever so often, uh, there are some significant or large changes in the FDA guide, which anchors this training program and this regulation. And uh, we've just had an announcement last week that some an accumulation of changes have now been posted on the FDA website. Whenever this happens, it sends out a few vibrations of concerns for everybody in the, that are that have to comply and all the trainers. And so we are, this is the first of many efforts we're gonna to make to try to help people through this transition period. Uh, I don't mean to make it sound like it's, it's a difficult task. It's just, it's just one of those things you have to do and it takes a little time. Uh, first of all, as you are well aware of, the Seafood Hassup Alliance maintains a number of publications uh, which try to supplement and explain the use of the FDA guide. And uh, whenever the guide changes, it's a domino effect through all our publications. So the changes we're talking about today, yes, we will talk about generating new bound versions of all the publications. And I'll give you some, some time uh, suggestions to help when that will occur. And likewise, we got a brand new publication that's coming out uh, and it will be available for the end of the year. And it can incorporate all these changes. And that new publication, it's a new aquaculture supplement, which we're not talking about that today, but you're welcome to ask questions at the end of this particular Zoom. Uh, I'll pause after each slide. I'm assuming some of the people on this call may not have the visual. What we're looking at right now is just a PowerPoint slide with just a copy of all of the existing training publications that we have, the so-called library of publications. Any questions at this point? Okay, let's move on. By the way, this present, this Zoom and with all the slides and discussion is being recorded and will be posted so that anybody can go back and look at this. And likewise, there will be, as I said, there'll be additional materials coming out in the future. Yes, a new addition uh, or new changes to the FDA guide has indeed occurred and they've already been posted by FDA and you can go there very conveniently. They have it posted. You could look at the entire guide, download it if you want or view individual sections and you can go to individual chapters that they've changed and they very cleverly have shown which chapters have and have not been changed. And you can visit that particular uh, website. It's just very simply FDA Seafood HACCP and you'll get there. Um, well, I'm currently looking at a slide that just shows a, a clip from that website uh, sh explaining how all the different new uh, uh, portions are, are available to explore. And how to deal with this, one of the things we say for new trainers or trainers with pending courses that want a quick look at this, you can go to what I recommend, they have an introduction and discussion section and you might want to click that open and that's what we're gonna view in the next slide. We have some clips from that particular section and I will give you some advice of how to read through these. If you want one condensed version of all the changes that have been made, FDA has itemized them all in this introduction section. And it can look pretty scary when you first look at it because it goes on for a number of pages. But the truth is, uh, it's not a lot of major changes. I mean, some name changes, some additions and what have you, but nothing major that's gonna you know, be a game changer or stop the show. It's, it's just customary cleanup and things that we need to be current. But I caution you as you read through this accumulation of changes, look very carefully because as you read through them, you will see that some chapters just include changes that were made in April of 2011 Others are the changes that have been made as of August 2019. The point is that the current FDA guide that you may have in your possession or that you can purchase from Florida Sea Grant has all the changes through April 2011. We are now racing to accommodate the next printing with the additions through August 2019. Some other things you may encounter when you read through these changes, like most of them are, you know, Pretty simple as I'm saying. Uh, you may run across one that some are gonna cause confusion. For example, on this page that we're currently looking at, 
we see that there's a change to chapter three in table 3-4, which says that they have removed one of the footnotes, number two. The footnotes are always a difficult issue, how people deal with them in training, and some people misinterpret them and forget them. But by you know, removing footnote number two, it gives the implications that it deals with pathogen growth and whether the consumer is going to cook the, uh, eat the product fully cooked. And that has all kinds of implications for controls that may or may not be needed. Um, the truth of the matter is the uh, FDA hazard guide has always dealt with this because they have a section called intended use. If the intended use is to fully cook, that still applies. I'm not here to discuss all the issues of the changes in the guide now, but I'm just alerting you to the types of things that you will encounter when you see this uh, download from the website. Let's go to some further advice in the next slide. And I am looking at some further pages clipped from the new additions that FDA has made and posted on their website. And one of the crazy things you're going to run into, and I'm not going to say an excuse for it, it's what we're up with and what we're up against and what we have to do. And the, you will see that the document has dual page numbering. In a chapter that has not been changed, they will use the old page numbering, like one, two, three, four, five, six. But in the new chapters where they've had to make some changes, they've gone to the page numbering that they plan to use in the future, which will be like 3-1, 3-2, 3- you got one document with two different ways of numbering the pages. Just hold your breath, you'll get through it, it's not that difficult, and eventually you'll see this whole manual will all be in the new numbering phase, but we're slowly progress progressing in that direction. In fact, we'll probably anticipate some further changes to the FDA guide before the end of 2020, and even more page numbers will change. But just alert you to that. It's, it's a little awkward, but you can deal with it. I'm going to pause here for a second before I finish with the last couple of slides. Any questions at this time? OK. Some questions we did anticipate is, OK, I'm getting ready to teach a course. I'm either getting ready to order manuals or already have ordered manuals. What am I going to do? Let's go to the next slide. Well, it's not just the manuals. Some of the changes, and we already had discussions all week with various people in our training committee working on this. We're gonna to have to change some of our models that you use, some of our, our training curriculum, the so-called Blue Guide. Even our segment one course on the internet will have to change a little bit, as well as some of our slide presentations. We're aware of all that. And we are progressively trying to do that as rapidly as we can. We have set a goal for ourselves to have the new FDA bound guide for purchase and distribution. Uh, it would be available probably within six weeks or at the latest eight weeks and all the other materials we hope will follow suit. Uh, so we ask you to remain patient. We learned of these changes at the same time everybody else did. So we're all at the same starting point and we're doing the best we can. And I'm just showing a slide now of all the different materials that have to be changed just to inform everybody that that's going to occur. It's just not going to be instantaneous. I think there's uh, one more slide. Uh, just to get a sense of the work it's going to take to make all these changes, uh, this is a slide that shows a table of all the new changes, the different chapters and appendices and things that have been at changed. And if you actually look at the old version of the guide and the new version, we're only looking at adding 30 new pages. Now, 30 pages may sound big to some people, and it is a little bit of a task, but it's not overwhelming, and it can be done, and we've done it before. We just have to ask for some patience in making this transition. Next slide. This is a concluding slide, and just to give some thoughts and for how we're going to respond with the situation. Here's the most important thing I can say. The existing FDA guides that you have and all the associated training materials remain in effect and you can still teach the courses. Uh, you can still use the current edition that you've got, naturally making reference to changes have been made, but there's still, it will not affect your status of teaching of the course and getting certifications and what have you. And as I have said before, the new editions will be get to you as soon as possible. During the interim, as you wait for new materials or go forward with your existing materials, um, 
you may, as a good trainer, uh, may want to look at the introduction as I spoke about earlier. Take a good glance, a quick glance to see if there's something that might influence your particular course, whether it be a certain product, a certain audience, or a certain area that you're working in. Uh, you may want to, to note that for that particular group. If you have a general audience, it's understandable. You always want to make them aware that these changes have been made, but there's, there's no game changer there that's gonna make you uh, compromise your course. Some trainers have said, well, shucks, I'll just go straight to the website and I'll just use tablets or I'll use my cell phone and have people download this and look at it. You can do that. In fact, people, some people do that. We don't encourage it because uh, people that have done it, uh, it gets confusing. It requires more time. You have half the audience doing it one way, half the audience doing it another way. Uh, and you, you can see how it can be complicated. But I have to admit that the tablet approach is what some people will want to use, in particularly during the transition. But regardless of which method you use, the point is, for well over 25 years of teaching these courses, the Seafood Hassle Alliance has always told their trainers, you always tell the audience to check the FDA website. Not only do you see updates to the FDA guide, but FDA is constantly posting additional information, videos, interpretations, as all sorts of other materials on the website. So it's part of your training to make them aware, not only of the existing guide, but also the website that supports it. And it also has shown through the years of training that having that bound copy, people value that and it becomes a quick, useful reference. And plus, if you ever look at most people's copies, they've educated the copy and bent pages and put in tape and what have you. So it becomes a very powerful tool rather than just depending on a tablet. So I am at the end of my presentation basically saying, march on, use the materials you've got, stay tuned, more is coming. Now, are there any questions at this point? This is the last slide before I conclude. Either I'm not wired or everybody's happy. Happy. All right. That will be more. I think we, and if people have some concerns, they don't understand this and that, it's natural if you wanted to send those to the Seafood Hesp Alliance. Uh, you can look them up at the AFTO website and Steve Otwell is my name. You can find my website and if you want to send me something or give me a phone call, I'll do the best I can. We anticipate there's going to be a lot of pen pals and a lot of exchange of information in the meantime. And there will be some other products coming forth in the near future about explaining if there becomes a consistent point of contention. We will probably have to deal with that with some other webinars. But in the meantime, I just wanted to reassure you to go, go ahead with what you've got and we're racing to get more materials to you.